In the world of computer companies, Microsoft, which has the largest number of customers globally, has sunk its servers into the sea to ensure their proper functioning. But why would they do that? Aren't they afraid of their servers getting wet? In fact, computer servers are the biggest headache for technology companies because they can overheat and fail under high loads. Therefore, technology companies have to think hard about where to place them. The warming global climate not only makes people uncomfortable but also causes servers to overheat. In 2022, the UK, where the temperature in the summer is usually just over 20 degrees, unexpectedly hit 40 degrees, causing anomalies in servers in many places. The most dramatic case was that the batteries were deformed due to overheating. Later, artificial cooling was used to restore the server's operation. Servers carry a great responsibility, and all management and transmission tasks must go through them. However, their biggest weakness is that they require constant temperature. They are sensitive to both high and low temperatures, which can affect their performance and even damage electronic components. Of course, this is not due to poor technology, but rather a self-protection mechanism of electronic components, just like the human immune system. High temperature damage is the most severe among high and low temperature damages. If the temperature is too high, electronic devices may be directly damaged. Therefore, keeping the servers cool has become a top priority for tech companies. But putting servers anywhere cool is not enough. For example, Microsoft had to build a specially sealed compartment to ensure that its servers would not get wet when they were sunk in the Scottish seabed. So, outside the 864 servers that Microsoft sank, there is a sealed and sturdy shell. But did you know that Huawei came up with a great idea to find a cool place for its servers? They hollowed out a mountain in Guizhou province, China. So why didn't Huawei follow Microsoft's approach and just sink their servers into the sea? Instead, they went to great lengths to dig a mountain. Well, I believe that Huawei must have done the math and believed that placing servers in the mountain would be more effective and cost-saving than placing them in the sea. In the following video, we will analyze the advantages and disadvantages of the different approaches taken by these two giants. Okay, let's get started. Microsoft's idea of building an underwater data center began in 2014 when they analyzed people's living habits worldwide, and found that people prefer living near the sea rather than in the deep inland. If the servers are placed in shallow waters, the heat dissipation problem can be solved, and the distance of data transmission can be shortened to increase the internet speed. In 2015, Microsoft conducted a 105-day on-site trial, which was a success for the project plan. In 2018, Microsoft officially announced that they would deploy data centers underwater. Then, they selected the sea area of the Orkney Islands in Scotland, built a 36.5-meter-long pipeline, and sunk a cylindrical sealed compartment containing servers. The temperature of the water decreases with depth, but if placed too deep, the pressure of the water will damage the servers. Microsoft believes that a depth of over 30 meters is just right. Servers cool faster in water, and being in water can protect them from external damage. Additionally, by cooling in water, the server will not cause air pollution. It's a win-win situation. However, this method has some limitations. First, the initial cost is too high, and secondly, the maintenance is difficult. Salt water is highly corrosive, and even the best materials will be damaged after prolonged exposure. Rust and corrosion on the server casing can lead to water ingress, which is a significant problem. What if the server fails underwater? How do they repair it? The best solution is remote operation, but some damage requires technicians to be on site, which can pose safety concerns. Fortunately, two years later, Microsoft salvaged the server compartment and discovered that the failure rate was much lower than the servers placed on land, only one-eighth. The most significant change was that many marine organisms had attached to the compartment, causing significant corrosion. However, Microsoft has proven with actual data that placing servers underwater is feasible. With this success, Microsoft has developed an even crazier plan. They have specially built a batch of big bathtubs to house servers. However, the tubs do not contain tap water or seawater but an immersion coolant that is completely harmless to electronic devices and non-conductive. 
The primary constituent of this liquid is fluorocarbon, which can absorb heat and has a boiling point of only 50 degrees, half of water. The heat emitted by the server can easily cause the coolant to boil, and through the boiling effect, the heat is dissipated. And these water vapors fall back into the bathtub, repeating the above steps to continue working, forming a circulating cooling system. No additional coolant is needed, and no special cooling equipment is required, yet the cooling cost is greatly reduced. Since this approach has so many benefits, why doesn't Huawei follow in Microsoft's footsteps? In May 2021, Huawei's data service center officially settled in the mountainous area of Guizhou. The scenery here is beautiful, but the development is lagging. However, with the entry of high-tech companies, it can also promote the economic development of this area. In fact, in addition to Huawei, Tencent and Apple have also followed suit and built data centers in Guizhou. The average altitude in Guizhou is about 1,000 meters, with many mountains, and the temperature in the mountains remains around 23 degrees even in hot weather, and it's not too cold in winter, around 7 degrees. The climate is comfortable all year round, without sudden changes in temperature, and the large temperature differences that affect server temperature control. No matter where a data center is built, it is a high electricity consuming and large land occupation project, and cost is the primary consideration. In China, Guizhou has the lowest electricity price. Because Guizhou has multiple hydropower stations and wind power stations, it can not only meet its own electricity consumption but also transport a lot of electricity to other parts of China. Just the electricity cost alone is enough to attract these large-scale high-tech companies to Guizhou. Moreover, the land cost in Guizhou is also very low. The cost of buying several hundred acres of land in Guizhou is much lower than in other places, which is also a very attractive condition. Tencent Seven Star Cave Style Data Center had a total investment of 820 million yuan to complete construction. If it were built in a place with expensive land prices, it would probably cost 1 billion yuan. Huawei's data center in Guizhou is located in the Guian New District at the junction of Guiyang and Anshuan cities. The total building area is 480,000 square meters, making it the largest cloud data center of Huawei in the world. The air quality in Guian New District is good, with no major particulate matter pollution, and the average annual temperature is around 15 degrees Celsius. The building ventilation in the data center uses direct ventilation, and cooling liquids are placed in equipment-intensive areas, similar to Microsoft, so that all servers can achieve natural cooling which is very environmentally friendly and energy-saving. In addition to the policy support of the Guizhou government for high-tech enterprises, Guizhou is currently the most cost-effective choice for building data centers. With so many excellent conditions in Guizhou, does Huawei still need to copy Microsoft's approach? After all, placing servers on land is definitely more convenient than placing them underwater. So, do you think if Guizhou is not chosen, does Huawei have any other good options? Well, thanks for your watching, and please be free to put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.